Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling. Uh, we have uh, Shane, and Shane, please forgive me if I murder this. You can murder my last name all you want. Uh, Wooker Feeney. Wooker Feeney. Wooker Fenning. Wooker Fenning. Fenning. Yep. Okay, we're we're Fennec. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, That's a great name, by the way. Great (laughs) name. Shane is the uh, country uh, conservationist land and water conservation in Wood County here. And appreciate your time, Shane. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Also, I want to thank uh, Bill L. Lightman, uh, chairman of the Wood County Ground Water Group. Thank you for being here, Bill. Thank you, James. Uh, Appreciate the time, guys. Especially, I I just want to take a note and let the audience know, uh, we did have Lance planned for this uh, bit, and Lance has his day job he's got to do and everything, so he isn't able to be here. Appreciate you guys kind of stepping in, especially with this topic we want to talk about. Before we dive into it and get to know you guys a little bit better, we also want to wish a good morning to our great friends at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, our friend Kev and the gang over there. Good to see you. So let's start there. Let's get to know you two, uh, your origin story a little bit first. Um, Shane, would you mind telling us a little bit about you and your background? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm originally from the Marshfield area, born and raised, so I'm a native to Wood County. I uh, went through the school system, of course, over in Marshfield. Um, went for a civil engineering degree uh, in college and basically got into county conservation work. Um, in the late 80s and I've been doing it ever since. I absolutely love the work and love the people and it's uh, it's a fun job. What brought you into the industry? What made, what pulled you into it that made you want to be a part of it? Um, at first it was just sort of to get my foot in the door on you know engineering stuff to be built because um, that was obviously my my background and my schooling but and the more I got into the conservation end of it and engineering for best management practices to change, um, you know, change things like surface water quality and groundwater quality and see the real benefits from that, that's, that's what really hooked me. Hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Shane. Uh, Bill, how about you? Okay, so I'm originally from, from Abbotsford, so Clark County. Um, Graduated from Abbotsford High School, went to UW-Eau Claire, became a school teacher, came to this area in 1971, taught in the Nakusa School District for 35 years, never saw any reason to leave. Um, Would never have become a Wood County Board Supervisor, kind of an interesting story here, had one of my former students not asked me to run. So that is interesting. Oh, wow. That's cool. And that was basically over the water issue, which we're going to be discussing today. That is very interesting. Oh, okay. So, So and you kind of included in there uh, what pulled you into this. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to diving into that a little bit more with you. And I just said diving in when we're talking about water. I (laughs) did not mean to do that. Um, We're talking water quality here. So let's kind of start there. And, And we'll just speak to Wood County. Um, how would you say our wood, our water quality is here overall? I know that you go by city by city, you know, mm-hmm. even zip code by zip code, and it all breaks down. But just in general, how our water quality is here in, in the Wood County, especially considering uh, in the recent weeks we've had stories in the Marshfield area come up about their water quality and that. Uh, so I guess we could start with just basically talking about... Um the general water quality of the state Mm. compared to Wood County, Mm. to put it into perspective. So one of the biggest probably water quality concerns statewide right now is nitrates in groundwater. And in the state, we're at about a 12% threshold as far as being above the parts per million standard for safe drinking water as far as nitrates go. It's about 12%. Uh, We just recently completed a two-year study in Wood County where we did countywide sampling of private wells across the county. We tried to target every section and every township throughout the entire county, which is about 822 uh, sections across the county. And we did a pretty good job with that. We got about 650 plus wells, uh, and so we got about a 75% participation, which in my mind was fantastic. As a result of that, uh, the numbers came in on an average. If we averaged everything, of course, you're going to have some high wells and some low wells. 
about um, 11%. So we're kind of in line with where the, the statewide average is, but at this point, um, we're a little bit better. Uh, there are definitely some areas of the county that have super good water quality, uh, more typically in the heavy soils, uh, deeper wells, better, high, better water quality, less likelihood of contamination. Hmm. Uh, there is a, a region down in the southern corner, the southeast corner, um, called the Central Sands area or region. And that is typically where we're starting to see some pretty elevated levels. And the focus of what we're going to talk about today really uh, focuses around the Central Sands groundwater project we're working on and um, how that's going to help the state hopefully... Um, get a better grasp on uh, what we can do, what we can change to prevent this from happening and then improve it. Uh, Bill, did you want to add anything to that? Um, well, there's a lot of things to add. I think more specifically politically, um, in 2019, when the, the speaker developed his task force on water quality, um, a lot of things came out of that, a lot of things didn't come out of that, but significantly what came out of it was the referendum question last April in Wood and Juneau and, and Marquette counties where 76, 77 percent of the people in each county said, yeah, we, we recognize the problem mm -hmm. and we want clean water. Uh, this April there will be a, the same referendum question going to larger counties, Beau Claire and La Crosse. And um, not that we're here to talk about PFAS, but you know that showed up on French Island in, in right north of La Crosse. And that is, we, we can't have you guys in and not talk PFAS. We, we almost can't. Oh, uh, right. it, it's one of the bigger things. There's people, uh, as many people that know what they are, people who are Googling right now and, and have been Googling and still looking for the answers. Um, so I can't have two uh, pros in here and not kind of touch on that subject. So let's piggyback off of that, Bill, and thank you for that. Uh, to explain it, to break it down for people, what PFAS are, can uh, do either one of you want to lead that, or, or add, both of you kind of attack it? Well, I can I can say a little bit, please. Um, and, and I do want to come back to nitrates at some point. Absolutely. But with the PFAS, five hundred what we call forever chemicals, and they've been most recently becoming newsworthy because they've got into in very specific places. Um, I'm thinking Pesh to go across. Um, they've got into water supplies. So it's coming from factories, other sources too, but we're firefighting foam, um, stain and water resistant coating to clothing, um, where those things are being produced. Mm. And then it gets into public water systems, and then you have the situation most recently that we heard of from Wausau. Mm -hmm. so. um, uh, did you want to add anything, sir? I would just say it builds right on the money with that. Um, it is becoming or surfacing as a pretty significant problem around the state. Um, and legislature is definitely tuning in on it as much as they have heard about the nitrate problem. PFAS is definitely uh, right behind it. And um, I think in the next few years you'll probably see some some legislation being drafted mm -hmm. um, trying to address it because uh, once it's in your public water supply uh it's a it doesn't really you know yeah. disintegrate or yeah. go away it just it stays there so i'm uh the little bit of digging i've been able to do on this uh, it does seem like uh, some of these industries the the you know you mentioned that uh, foam from a fire extinguisher that, that some of these industries are working on trying to fix that. Uh, but I mean, again, we're playing defense when we need to be playing offense on this. Um, when, it, when it comes to the, and I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we only have so much time and I want to get into the central sands groundwater and I want to come back to nitrates. Um, but as far as you mentioned, uh, the, you know, the, the bills coming up and those sorts of things, um, it seems like, it, and I mentioned this to you guys in our pregame, uh, it doesn't matter who I have in here, water quality comes up. It seems like, hey, this is a, if I'm a politician, this is where I'm going to make my name. I'm going to, you know, champion this. And to be fair, uh, any of our representatives we've had in at, at times in conversations has come up. But we know right now we're in the middle of a, a political season, and I don't hear anybody talking about this. 
do you guys feel, are you, are you encouraged or, or discouraged by the, the way that we are treating this as, a, as just a society, the way we're talking about this topic and everything? And, and yeah, I'll let you go. Yeah, what you got? What you got? <laughs> yeah. um, so I'll probably say the first controversial thing this morning. Um, we formed in Wood County a citizens groundwater group five years ago. Um, now we've, what well, Shane's going to talk about momentarily here is we formed a six county collaborative. We've been doing everything we can to gain the attention of legislators in Madison. Um, and actually we've gone federal with it too. And I think the problem is so large and nobody quite knows how to deal with it. And it is not happening and it needs to happen. Politicians like headlines. They they like simple things. They like hey lower taxes. You know that kind of thing. Uh, they they are they have enough people in their bubble telling them that this is what the audience can understand, and they dumb things down. When really we need that. We need people to be touching on these ones. Maybe it's not doesn't make a fancy headline, but man, is it something we need? Uh, it's it's a good point to make. Appreciate that, Bill. So let's go ahead and go back to nitrates. I wanted to touch on that because that's important. Uh, did you want to uh, leave that, Bill? Um, okay, so I retired from teaching school in 2006, didn't know anything about nitrates. I don't think I knew the word nitrates came from nitrogen. That's <laughs> it. Um, 2007, things started to happen. I was oblivious to that. But by 2012 and 2014, when I got on county board, this had become just a, a very significant issue. And so that's why the two groups were formed. and. And probably we should let Shane get into the, the county collaboratives work. That would be a good way to fall into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that, the Central Sands Groundwater uh, County Collaborative. So basically that's a, that's a mouthful to say, hmm. uh, but for the most part what it really means is that uh, in the fall of 2018, counties, counties that had something significant in, in common, which was the Central Sands region, um, we're starting to really find some high detect wells out there in their county. And a lot of us had the same exact concerns. And so we started talking, we started meeting, and at that point we had a few other counties involved as well. Um, so right now there's six, there's technically nine counties in the Central Sands region. Six of us have really stuck with this through the long haul. Um, and those counties would be, I'll just list them off here for you quick, Adams, Juneau, Marquette, Portage, Wood, and Washera counties. And that is going to be made up of county representatives from each one of those counties, including county departments like the Health Department, the Land and Water Conservation Office, Planning and Zoning, um, and Land Conservation are merged in some counties. We've got um, the UW Extension out of Madison and locally in each county, and then our county elected officials like Bill, who would be a county board supervisor um, from each respective county. I think one of the key factors of that is, is something that, again, I've heard of many people talking about sharing information. Uh, it's not as if the water stops at a zip code, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to feel it from them because they're in a different town or whatever. Right. We all got to share information about this stuff if we're going to make this better. Well, and the interesting part about that was that um, we quickly recognized that there have been studies on this Central Sands region that date back, you know, before the 1960s. Mm. And wow. uh, that's really when the, um, the irrigated agriculture came into the area. And so part of this process is looking at all of that studies and all of that data that's been collected and and getting it into one database hmm. and that's really what the focus of this group has been and hmm. uh, depending on where you want to go I can get into more yeah. detail of that specific Let, project. Please but. do, uh, especially whatever you think is interesting to the audience. I think that is going to be a, a good uh, starter for that. Yeah, so really our, our, uh, our mission for the, for, the, for the group is basically to work together to meet present and future needs for safe, high quality, reliable, and sustainable water quality. Pretty simple mission, um, sounds simple, but not necessarily easy. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, we wanna, 
We want to look at advancing the use of nitrates and neonicotinoid findings, which again, this is part of that data collection and merging, uh, to inform groundwater protection and improvement strategies for the counties, um, how we can make the situation better or start to see improvements in the in the positive direction instead of the negative. So Shane, what uh, for the audience that may not know, what is a neo uh, neotop <laughs> Neonicotinoid. Neonicotinoid, thank you. Yes. A lot of people um, will either call them NIX or mm. they'll call them Neo. Um, and that's basically, it's going to be a, pa a uh, panel of chemicals that are going to fall in the insecticide, pesticide categories. And they're a lot of times used, um, you know, for, for crop protection okay. as far as impacts from, from both insects and, and mm -hmm. uh, pests. So thank you. Appreciate you explaining that. Yep. So I guess the biggest thing, um, you know, we wanted to talk about was that we, as we formed as a group, we determined the need to, and I'm going to throw a somewhat fancy term out there, to do a gap analysis. Mm -hmm. So at first we tried to pursue funding through the state legislature. Things were going pretty smooth back in, in 2020 when our current governor got elected mm -hmm. and declared the year uh, the clean the year of clean right. drinking water, yeah. which was huge. Yeah. And then the the um, the task force went around the state and had listening sessions and had people talk and professionals like myself present at those. And basically as a result of that, it was that was probably almost a year long process. Mm -hmm. There were thirteen water bills that were a result of that, that we're wow. going to go to the legislature. And at that time, um, they sailed through the um, assembly and were passed unanimously. This was a bipartisan set of bills. Mm -hmm. And they just stalled at the Senate. The Senate pulled the plug and did not meet anymore and take up the topic. So here we sit two years later, blah, blah, blah. But as a result of not being able to get anything from the legislature, we reached out to our partners at DNR, DATCAP, um, and the UW University system. And we were able to land a grant that allowed us to do what I'm gonna call a gap analysis. Mm -hmm. And really what that is, is to hire a postdoctorate individual that has been compiling all the studies, all the data, all the well sampling points in six counties. Wow. And we got a preview of that the other day at a meeting. Hmm. They're just about done um, getting through the data and duplicates and um, well over 200,000 sampling points, um, over 12,000 in Wood County alone. That's a lot of well samples to, to analyze and get data from. And uh, what we're gonna benefit from that is that all of the counties that are working in the same direction at some point in time in the future will have their fingertips at all of this information and we'll be able to determine where we don't have enough information, where we need more information, where uh, we can focus if we find some hot spots, things like that. Whereas without the gap analysis, we'd be reinventing the wheel and doing studies that were already done and yeah. we don't want to do that. So that's why uh, we did so this. So James, can I jump in here a second? Please do. Um, a lady that you may want to interview on this show, the, the person doing the gap analysis that we see, Shane and I see frequently, her name is Dr. Carla Romano. By August or September, she <laughs> should be coming around locally to the six counties. And, and presenting data. Hmm. So it'll not only be the, the data of old that we started collecting, I think Shane, you said in the 70s, but it'll be recently collected data. There's a scientist at UW-Madison by the name of Catherine Christensen who's doing absolutely new, I mean, they, they dug new wells in the agricultural corridor um, in south southwestern wood and, and northeastern Juneau County last summer. 
So we'll have very recent data. Excuse me, one second, yeah. gentlemen. Pam, did you get that? No, she does all of our scheduling and our production over there. Um, and that is a great point, Bill. Thank you for that. I actually really would love to talk to them, and I, I would almost guarantee that we will if they have that. We can work out our schedules and get them on the show here. Um, this is one of those ones too, and, and and this is me talking, not these gentlemen, not anybody else talking here. But I, I, I can't help but thinking of this uh, from last week and weeks before and, and talking to many, many, not just our representatives, but just in general, just uh, throughout the state, throughout the whole country here. The, this is the frustration that comes in for us as, as citizens. The grandstanding and the, I'm not going to do this because you have this letter in front of your name. It, it's got to stop. We, uh, it, it's the most frustrating thing in the world to me because we're dealing with an issue here that is affecting our kids, affecting us, affecting future generations. And it's nothing's getting done after two years, as you mentioned, Shane, because of grandstanding. Uh, you can give me all the whining and all the this and this about that or whatever. It comes down to grandstanding. We understand the game by now of politics. And it's, it's tiresome. And that, that is me getting off my soapbox now. Uh, I do want to so, get... Oh, go ahead. Can, can I go back to Dr. Romano for just Please a second? Please do. I, yeah, I was so, curious about So that. what she will have late this summer, early fall, will she have all this data collected, including new data, and there will be a website built. And the most significant thing is, from this large area, we'll have centralized data. It'll be at your fingertips on a website. And all the way from realtors to, to anybody who wants the information, it'll be now in a place where it can be found. Um, I think there will even be some recommendations made. Hmm. So, I mean, that's what to look forward to. Answers. <laughs> And that, da yes, and that data, and that having that database, having that information at, at anybody's fingertips is, is really important. I'm glad we went back to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm looking forward to talking with her, looking forward to diving into that more. Um, I do want to take a moment, though, to, because uh, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm tired of waiting for politicians to get things done. Uh, what can we do on our day-to-day -day basis? How can we help with this on our day-to-day -day lives? Is there anything we can do? Well, the Wood County Health Department would tell you that if you have a private home well, you, know, you, you can check your own water. And you may need to check it three, four times in the same year, hmm. not just once every 10 years or something hmm. like that. Nitrate levels change. So on an individual basis, that's one thing you can do. Um, politically, you could support, I, I know you're looking at uh, what I'm looking at here, Senate Bill 677, hmm. 678 which may be acted on mm. this, this term yet. Yeah. Mm. Apparently the Senate has one more meeting, this biennium, and the, and the Assembly has three meetings. Maybe that will come out. Mm. So those are two things that I could think of. Uh, thank you, Bill. Shane? Yeah, I just, to touch on the private well thing, um, there's, you know, uh, 900,000 private wells in the state of Wisconsin, and for the most part, an extremely small percentage ever gets sampled. Mm. Folks out there kind of take it for granted that their private well is, you know, pristine drinking water and so forth. And with the chemical compounds like nitrate and neonicotinoids and PFAS, you, you can't taste, smell, or see this stuff in the water. So unless you're testing, you're going to have no idea if it's there. And it definitely has long-term health effects. And um, so like what Wood County did was we, we I went to county board and asked, to get the funding to do this two couple year study. And really what that did was give us an opportunity to reach out to folks and get a better baseline representation of what's out there in the county. And so one thing you definitely could do is really encourage folks with private wells, if they've never tested their wells, and I've talked to folks that have lived in their home for 30 years and have never once tested their well, to test their well and make sure what they're drinking is safe um, and so forth. And some people just don't want to know. See, then, and wow. honestly, you set me up perfectly. That, that was great, <laughs> Shane, because I did want to come back to one thing. I, I, I've been ribbing on politicians a lot. And something that Bill said before I think is noteworthy of, well, it's hard, to, it's not simple, and it's not easy to explain. Um, and, and I get that, and, and they got a job to do, and they're trying to get reelected and things like that. So you do look for the easy stuff, but they're not, they're just us. They're, they're no different than us. They're community members. There's people, they believe the same as us and all that. So it, it makes me think about, well, if that's how they feel, how do we feel individually? And it is a big topic, and it seems so overwhelming. And you know? one of those things, well, we can't fix it. Let's just keep rolling with it. 
that's not the case. And I, I would say that one of the greatest things you can do to attack this topic, to play, to hope we can get to play some offense, is be informed. Uh, learn about this subject. Dive into the subject. Learn as much as you can about it and stay informed about it. The information you learned last year is probably need, needs to be updated. Um, that's important. And uh, we're looking forward to getting that database, getting more of this information and being able to, you know, hopefully make our water and our community that much cleaner for the next generation and the generation after that. I, Not to speak for anybody else, but it's not about so much me and me drinking the water. I want my kids and kids' kids to be able to have clean water. I've kind of given up on the idea of me having it, but I hope that they will have it. And that's kind of where we're at with this. So be informed, learn more, and man, anytime you see either of these individuals talking, be sure to be there. I cannot thank you both enough for the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. i got to warn you, though, you're too good. We're bringing you back. You guys will be coming back eventually. We're looking forward to that, too. Uh, again, uh, Shane Wooker Fing. Fing? Fenig. 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 Uh, Shane, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, Bill L. Lightman. Uh, Bill, thank you so much for being here as well. Thank, thank you, you, James. Uh, we'll talk again real soon. And we'll come back with uh, part two of Warning Magazine, where we'll speak with the ODC coming up right here on AM 1320 WFHR 97.5 FM WFHR.